Good morning, dear student. Dear student, our today's session is consumers' equilibrium. Okay, this is the last topic of our chapter consumers' equilibrium with the help of indifference curve analysis. Dear student, in this part we will understand how consumers' equilibrium is achieved with the help of indifference curve analysis. Okay, which you also known as IC curve analysis. Dear students, we all know that consumers' equilibrium refers to the point. where consumer get the maximum satisfaction by spending his given income on the prevailing market price of different goods and services it simply represents our consumers equilibrium so the basic point here you have keep to mind is the maximization or maximizes his satisfaction by the consumer so this is the core point of the consumer equilibrium okay student now if we uh, if we start with the if you think from a uh, indifference curve point of view then there are two conditions which must be satisfied by a consumer to fulfill the condition of consumer equilibrium these two points are the first one mrs of xy equals to px upon py now this mrs you already studied about this mrs which is marginal rate of substitution of xy commodity it is basically the slope of indifference curve when the slope of indifference curve equals to px upon py now this px upon py is the slope of price line or budget line you all are familiar with the concept of budget line so when the slope of indifference curve is equal to the slope of budget line okay then we can say that a consumer can reach consumer equilibrium point so this is our first condition okay and we and we can see this condition with the help of a simple diagram like you all are familiar that suppose this is the graph in this graph this is our budget line you all are familiar that this budget line the formula of the slope of budget line is px upon py so when the slope of this budget line is equal to the slope of indifference curve it means this is our indifference curve so when the slope of budget line is equal to the indifference curve the point where they both meet like this point so this point is r point so r point is the point where the slope of budget line which is px upon py is equal to the slope of indifference curve like the slope of indifference curve which is m r as marginal rate of substitution okay dear student so then the slope of budget line this budget line is equal to the slope of indifference curve then we can say a consumer is at a point of equilibrium okay but there must be fulfill the second condition okay we must have to fulfill our second condition then only we can say consumer is in equilibrium the second condition is ic is convex to the point of equilibrium okay at the point of equilibrium the indifference curve should be convex in nature like this is the graph and this is the uh, your this is your price line okay this is our graph this is our price line so your indifference curve should be convex in nature this is the convexity of the nature okay as you all know that this is this curve is known as concave curve always keep in mind this curve is known as concave curve okay and this curve is known as convex curve so the indifference curve should be always in the shape of convex curve not in the shape of concave curve or not in the shape of straight line like this or like this okay so we must have fulfilled these two conditions so that consumer can reach the point of equilibrium okay student now move to our next point next part which is graphical presentation of consumer equilibrium dear student you all are familiar with our previous example that suppose the income of the consumer is rupees 60 and he wish to buy two commodity like x and y as you all know that the two commodities is essential both uh, in the but in the budget line we studied that it is this uh, in budget line uh, we shows this um, the combination of two goods in the indifference curve we studied that we show the combination of two goods so two commodities the uh, uh, so two commodities are very essential or important okay for uh, for plotting or for um, representing the condition of consumer equilibrium that's why we have take two goods x and y the price of good x is rupees 2 and the price of good y is rupees 1 and the income is rupees 60 so you can say that y equals to rupees 60 which is your income and price of good x equals to rupees 2 
and price of y equals to rupees 1 so this is your basic condition the total income which consumer have is rupees 60 okay and these are the price of two commodities okay student now move to the next side okay and for consumer equilibrium we have to satisfy these two condition one marginal rate of substitution of xy equals to px upon py second ic is convex to the origin now let us explain with the help of diagram okay in a state of equilibrium the consumer buy 15 unit of good x and 30 unit of good y then he is maximizing his satisfaction now 15 unit of good good x it means there is 15 unit of good x price is rupees 2 plus 30 unit of good y price is rupees 1 so 15 into 2 30 and 30 into 1 30 the summation is 60 and we know that our consumer has rupees 60 so this is the best combination where a consumer can reach the point of of uh, equilibrium so we can say that okay 15 unit of good x and 30 unit of good y the combination is rely on this point so this is the best point for the consumer equilibrium okay now we can see that we in this diagram we have pq like we have uh, p and q this is our uh, price line or you can say your budget line p and q is your budget line like this and ic is your indifference curve you can easily see in the diagram you can see both both the curve is uh, indifference curve is tangent at the budget uh, budget line which is at point e so we can see that at point e our marginal rate of substitution of x y equals to price of x good divided by price of y good which is known as slope of price line so we can say that slope of indifference curve is equals to slope of price line okay dear student so e is the point of equilibrium is the point of consumer equilibrium here our two condition our basic two condition is satisfied our first condition like marginal rate of substitution of x y equals to p x p x upon py which is fulfilling here and second point is ic indifference curve is concave uh, sorry indifference curve is convex in nature so we can see that our indifference curve is convex in nature and we can easily get a price line and our indifference curve touches that price line in this particular diagram okay student now move to our next point that this is the explanation of the diagram which i explained you you can easily go through with this explanation okay now the definition of equilibrium this is one of the important part which you have note down and you can write uh, in your notes that the equilibrium is struck at point e in our diagram where marginal rate of substitution of x y equals to p x upon p y okay now this is what is this this the rate at which the consumer is willing to substitute x y okay he is willing to substitute x y good given his taste and preference coincides okay coincides with the rate at which market allows the consumer to substitute x y this is important part like first part in the first point consumer is willing to substitute okay as a consumer i am willing to substitute x y good okay second market should be allowed okay the rate at which the product is uh, you know the the rate at which the product have so the market allows the consumer so these are the two main things which we have keep in mind then only we can achieve over this condition okay consumer is willingness to substitute xy and market allows the consumer to substitute xy good so okay so at point e the consumer is sacrifices two unit of y two unit of y for one unit of x because the ratio of px upon py is two raised to one we all know that the price of good x is two rupees price of good y is one rupees that's why price of x divide so we can see that price of x divided by price of y which is 2 rupees divided by 1 rupees okay so we can easily get the price ratio like this okay dear student so this is our consumer equilibrium consumer is achieving maximum satisfaction by fulfilling these two conditions these two conditions we can easily understand with the help of a diagram that in this diagram all the two conditions is satisfy you can easily explain this diagram okay student now these two condition is further explained in these point okay you can uh, it 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 is up to you that 
if you wish that you can explain these point uh, both individually or otherwise you can uh, otherwise you can plot simply this curve okay this diagram and you can explain both the points in a single diagram it's up to you whether you can explain all your points your both the points in the same diagram or you can explain both the points separately like this okay so it's your choice like in the first condition that the uh, rational behind condition of uh, consumers the first is what, what are the reasons okay in this part we will explain the reasons we will go we will go to study you know every point in deep so in this part we study every point in deep the first point is the first condition you you all are familiar with the first condition that mrs which is marginal rate of substitute of xy equals to px of py which is known as slope of indifference curve equals to slope of price line okay student the consumer will strike his equilibrium only when mrs marginal rate of substitution of xy equals to px upon py because at no other point there are different combinations he can get the maximum satisfaction to a student in this diagram you can see that we have a diagram we have the price line which is pq pq is our price line we have three indifference curve ic1 ic2 and ic3 and from the uh, properties of indifference curve you all are familiar that higher the indifference curve higher the level of satisfaction okay it means ic3 indifference curve ic3 give more satisfaction as compared to ic2 and ic1 higher the indifference curve okay higher the level of satisfaction so ic3 give us more level of satisfaction as compared to ic2 and ic1 and in case of ic1 and ic2 ic2 give us more satisfaction as compared to the ic1 so in this diagram we can see that our ic3 is not touching the budget line or price line so we can neglect the ic ic3 because this particular curve is not touching our budget line okay and in case of ic1 we can find in case of ic2 our indifference curve is touching the budget line now move to our next point which is ic1 in the case of ic1 it is the lower curve as compared to the ic2 that's why we already neglected this curve that's why we can easily say that the consumer is in equilibrium at point e because at point e the indifference curve is at its highest point okay and the slope of budget line is touching the slope of indifference curve or we can say that indifference curve is tangent at the budget line that's why we had take indifference curve 2 ic2 you can easily see this pq is the budget line it shows the budget constraint the consumer cannot go beyond ic1 ic2 and ic3 indicated indifference map of the consumer okay we i already explain you this particular point the consumer will try to reach the higher possible ic which i told you that indifference curve is higher than means level of satisfaction is higher because higher ic reflect higher level of satisfaction okay now equilibrium on ic3 is ruled out as i told you okay and equilibrium on consumer get the equilibrium at point e he will not go towards the point you know both point f and g on ic1 he gives the consumer lower level of satisfaction that's why consumer is strict at point e only okay because point f and point g give him low level of satisfaction because ic1 is lower than ic2 okay student now move to our next point which is condition 2 indifference curve is convex at the point of equilibrium dear student at the point of equilibrium indifference curve must be convex to the origin okay not concave okay now we all know that the indifference curve indicates that mrs is declining that marginal rate of substitution is declining that's why ic is convex in the nature now what is convex curve this is your convex curve dear student and this is your concave curve okay when you make a c this is your convex when you make a inverse c this is your concave so your indifference curve should be always of convex in nature okay so we can explain this with the help of diagram dear student in this particular diagram we have three curve ic1 ic2 and ic3 we can see that ic1 is convex in nature 
and IC3 is also convex in nature and IC2 is concave in nature. So we can see that we have three points F, E and G. All the three points relying on the budget line touches the budget line. But due to concave or due to con uh, concave city, we will reject IC1 because this is convex, this is concave. And we know that the nature of our indifference curve we, uh, should be convex in the nature. Then only consumer will get the consumer equilibrium. So we neglect this point. IC1 is neglected. Okay. Now we have two points, IC2 and IC3. In both the case, our indifference curve is touches the price line, which is at point F. Our indifference curve touches the price line at point G. So in both the in both the point consumer get the level of consumer equilibrium okay so both the points are correct so you can go for f point or you can go for g point okay now the question arises in many of you okay in many of you ask me the questions like kiss uh, why why a consumer is getting two point uh, two different level of uh, equilibrium in the same conditions he have rupees 60 still he is getting two point of equilibrium no a consumer is always going to gain equilibrium in one point these conditions may be different according to the consumer suppose we have uh, we you know that we have two goods good x and good y okay and if i plot this like this you can easily understand now okay suppose a consumer like good x Good example is we can take it as mango and we can take it as apple. Suppose a consumer like mango more, then he will go for point G. Point G is the, his consumer equilibrium because he is getting more mango at point X as compared to apple. And if a consumer like more apple, he will go for F as equilibrium because he will get because he can get more apples as compared to the mango. Okay, so now I hope it is clear to you. It's depend upon consumer to consumer. So that's it for today, student. This is our last topic, and this topic is finished, and our chapter is also finished. We will move towards our next chapter in our next video. Okay, till now, stay safe, take care, and just complete your work and send it to me. Okay, our topic consumer equilibrium is finished here. Okay, thank you, students.